Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So we're going to discuss um, memory issues after a stroke today. Um, mainly because I've had a few stumbles with memory myself, so I thought we'd just review it. So I know I'm not going crazy. So because this is a researched video, I'm going to include some of the links in the description below of the research that I've done. So that way you can see where I found some of my data. And again, the research I do isn't exhaustive. It's 45 minutes maybe on the internet, looking for a few relevant articles and pulling out some information from those. So I got one good one. It's from the stroke folks in the United Kingdom. It gives a link to a 10 page PDF that deals with more than memory. And it's an excellent resource from the read I gave it. So memory loss is something that's about one third of all stroke folk are going to report. They're going to say there's some disruption with the memory. Um, now, if the disruption of your memory, your ability to retain, develop uh, your memories becomes a long-term event, they call that dementia. So, and again, I'm not trying to make this video to scare anyone to think that I've got dementia because I don't believe I do nor has anyone said I do. Um, but if you think you are going through an event after your neurological injury, be it a brain injury, be it a stroke, um, and you believe that your memory is very faulty and it's on the decline, please go present yourself to your clinical team, your neurologist, your GP, whoever, and get them to do the appropriate assessments to make sure that you can get the help that you need. So, Memory is a funny thing. We work with long-term memory. We work with short-term memory. We work with, with, you know, your working memory, your immediate, I need to remember this now because I'm working on it now, memory. You know, so your working memory is basically, right now, I'm working on this video. So everything I've had to do for this video would immediately be my working memory. My short-term memory will be an hour from now, once I've done this video, do I remember it? And then my long-term video memory will be, you know, a month and a half, two months from now, do I even remember making this video? So, memory loss occurs because the nerve cells, the brain cells, uh, the links between them, they're damaged because of your stroke or your brain injury, right? So, at that point because you may have some memory issues you may have difficulties in doing things like learning people's names remembering people's names learning new skills learning new tasks um, so and again i found a few interesting pieces of information uh, some of it is applicable to me which is a little bit scary but then again don't mean to grab this information to be scary, right? So, dementia occurs when a stroke and no other cause can be found. Uh, it's called vascular dementia. So, you've had a stroke. You now have what's called vascular cognitive impairment. I did a video on that. I'll include the link down below in the description about vascular cognitive impairment. So, if you have no other medical reasoning for dementia... And the doctors will do what's called a differential diagnosis. They will look at all the situations that present themselves specifically about your case. They will take all of those factors. Uh, they will run them through various assessments and tools. And provided there is no other reasonable explanation for you to have dementia, right? they then have to rule the stroke as the cause. right? So as long as you didn't have dementia before your stroke or you were exposed to something through a workplace event, like chemicals or heavy metals or whatever the case may be. Um, you didn't have a pre-existing brain injury before your stroke. Um, so that way, the, the dementia is more likely caused by vascular cognitive impairment, which is directly related to the stroke. So strokes, large and small, can cause dementia. Strokes, large and small, can cause vascular cognitive impairment. Strokes, large and small, can cause memory issues. Um, however, the one document I found indicated um, a history of several strokes or a stroke located on the left side of the brain all seem to increase the likelihood of dementia 
in the first year after the stroke. I read that and I was a bit taken aback. Um, that is a statistic or a fact um, piece of information I, I was unaware of. So I now have to contend with the fact that, you know, I doubt it'll ever happen, at least in that case for me, but it's potential, right? So some of the symptoms of memory after your stroke um, might include confusion or problems with your short-term memory, might be wandering or getting lost in familiar places, could be difficulty following instructions. Uh, you might have trouble making um, financial transactions. Uh, now, luckily with bank cards, that gets so much easier, but if you actually had to have uh, paper money and coin and, and do it that way, that is what they're referring to there because, you know, we've all reached for something that is not a bank card when going to pay something at a, at a, at a, at a cashier. You know, I've inadvertently grabbed my health card or inadvertently grabbed, you know, something else that looks like a bank card. And you go to tap, and you're like, oops, can't pay with that. We've all done that, so that's not such a big deal. But are you able to, if I was to give you fives, tens, twenties, you know, and a, and a bag of silver, could you actually figure out how to make that transaction? Now let's talk about the types of memory that people have. So depending on the damage caused by your stroke, depending on your overall health before your stroke, depending on your overall health after your stroke, um, depending on what side the stroke is on, depending on how large, small the stroke was, there's so many factors. Um, you now have to worry about your verbal memory, your visual memory, um, your informational memory, and then something which is known as vascular dementia, which we've already sort of briefly touched on. So your verbal memory is memory of names, stories, information, things to do with words. Your visual memory, fa faces, shapes, routes, things. So, uh, last week at work i ran into two people one i haven't seen in a significant period of time um and they walked up to me and say hey how's it going and i literally and i i own when i'm not able to do things i'm, I'm not gonna get you know give a little to get along kind of thing because i think that does a disservice to me and to, to anybody else i'm not gonna pretend um and i had to tell them like listen i'll be honest i, I don't know who you are and they were visibly upset. I could tell that they were visibly upset that they couldn't remember, or I couldn't remember who they were. Um, another another time, a day or two later, um, someone that I've worked with uh, asked me how I'm doing. And again, I had to do the like, I just can be honest, I, I don't know who you are. <laughs> And, and he was really good about it. Um, he shook my hand. Uh, he said, it's glad to have you back. Um, we had a brief conversation. Um, and, and I know those events are awkward. Um, and, and I don't mean to make them awkward uh, in any way. It's just, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bullshit someone and just pretend I know them because eventually I'm going to have to lie to people to say that, yes, I know who you are. Okay, so if I have to lie to say four people a week, just to pretend that I know who they are, am I going to be able to keep all of that straight? Keeping in mind, I didn't know who you were to begin with. So eventually the music is going to end. I'm going to be left without a chair and then I look like, like an asshole. My preferred method is I'm just going to, we're just going to deal with the, the 90 seconds of discomfort and it's going to be more you than me. I'm going to be honest about that. It's, it's going to be, you're going to be more uncomfortable about it than I am. Because I'm, I've accepted the fact that I may not remember who you are. Um, I've accepted the fact that I have to be realistic. That if I don't remember who you are, I'm not going to bullshit it. Like, I'm just going to like, I don't know who you are. And that's the thing, right? And I'm, so that's, that's how I deal with that. Um, informational memory, I still suffer from that. There are times where I'm able to remember things, but I don't know the context. Um, and there are times where I know I should know things, but I don't. 
I know some of my long-term memory um, has been corrupted. I know some of my long-term memory, some of the memories probably, at present, they're not there. Um, and I'm, I'm not really getting bent out of shape because of that, um, because it's not really worth getting bent out of shape out of it. It's like, why am I going to get upset over something I legitimately have no control over? Right? I'm just going to continue to live my life the way I do. I'm going to continue to wander around and do what I need to do to support me and, and my recovery. And, it, and if something comes up where I don't remember your name, I'm just going to be honest. I don't remember your name. Um, if something, something comes up where I can't remember information, I, I need to be honest. I don't remember that. If something comes up where I, you know, anything that happens, I just have to be realistic in that moment, right? And then informational memory, we've, we've touched on that. There's been times where in the middle of a phone call, I'm talking to a customer and I'm thinking the word modem. I know that's the word I want, but for whatever reason, um, it just doesn't want to come out. Now, is that my memory issues? Is that um, the aphasia? Whatever the case may be. Vascular dementia. Again, that's a form of um, vascular cognitive impairment. I might do um, a video just on vascular dementia because that's a common postural condition involving the loss of thinking ability. Right? Where you're having difficulty not only processing memory, creating memory, recalling memory, but you're having difficulty just creating an effective thought. Right? At present, I'm just going to lay this one on you. There is no, at, at present, currently in, in, in standard medical science, there are no specific medical treatments to help reverse memory loss. Um, there may be some experimental procedures at you know, maybe the University of Toronto or an experimental procedure at John Hopkins or a, you know, a experimental procedure at, you know, Cambridge or in Hong Kong or, you know, at a reputable medical school. Um, yeah, there may be some experimental stuff going on, but that's, again, experimental. So we're just going to talk about standard treatments. At present, there are no standardized accredited treatments that will help you get your memory back. You know, what they can do is if they believe you're starting to lean towards the dementia scale, they can treat you as if you had Alzheimer's. But again, that's a band-aid solution. It's, it's not going to get your memory back. It's going to contain the damage you currently have um, and, and help you lead a better life going forward. Um, you know, and again, that all depends on many things, like we've talked before in, in this video and others. It all depends on what side of the brain did you have damage, how extensive was that damage, um, what is the skill and ability of your rehabilitation team look like, your occupational therapist, your speech and language therapist, your physiotherapist, your neurologist, right, and anyone else that needs to be involved. Um, how quickly did you get rehabilitation after your stroke? And I mean, so you spend the first three, four days in hospital. Um, how quickly did you get to see an occupational therapist? How quickly did you get to see a, um, uh, a neuropsychologist? How quickly did you get to see your physiotherapist? How quickly did you get to see your speech and language pathologist? Because there's a direct link between the sooner the interventions, the better the outcome. And then you get into the last piece, um, the cooperation uh of the people that are help caring for and with you. So the, the caregivers around you, that being your family, somewhat your friends. So you can help re rehabilitate your memory, but you can't rebuild it in some cases. Um, and because a stroke is so unique to the individual and the individual is so unique to the stroke, not everything I'm going to say is going to always apply to everyone in every situation. So one thing could be form daily routines. You do certain things at certain times of the day. Um, and you just get into that routine of at, you know, 4.30 in the afternoon, I start making dinner. Um, I get up every morning at 7.35, you know. Um, you can do other things by breaking things down into simple tasks. Um, you know, I sort of did some of that right after my stroke by cooking, right? Um, I would practice, because you got to eat, right? And once I trusted myself handling a knife. 
um, and being around hot things, so I still burn myself occasionally. You know, cooking could be something. Making a habit of putting things away in the same place. Yes, I hear my mother screaming in my head right now. If you knew where you put it, you wouldn't have to look for it now. Yep. So, um... If you always put it in the same place, you wouldn't have this problem. Well, thanks, Mom. Um, so, and, and part of that could also be, um, before you go to bed at night, lay out everything on the kitchen table, or lay everything out on your coffee table, or lay everything out on your dresser. So you lay everything out left to right. As they come out of your pockets, they go back into your pockets kind of thing. Right? Um, this one doesn't work for me because I'm not really a follower of famous people. Associate names with a famous person or someone that you already know. Well, yeah, but if you already know a Michael and then you know two more Michaels, well, Michael number one, two, and three doesn't really work out that well. And then if you know a Stephen but another Stephen but they spell it different, then you're really fucked. And then I live in Canada where Stephen could also be ATN. Well, fuck me. Don't even bother. Um, form a picture in the mind of things to remember. Bizarre images that might be better better remembered. So I guess you're walking with, around with Salvador Dali flashcards. I don't know how that would work. I'll be quite honest. Um, jot down notes of what needs to be done to complete a task right away. So there are some times where I might need to do that. Write things down. I have a whiteboard on the fridge and certain things that I need to remember, um, I write them on the whiteboard, right? You may need to just simply go back to like grade three, grade four techniques of repetition, 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 repetition. Keep doing it over and over and over and over again until you get it right. right? Um, you know, you might, for example, uh, I went home uh, to visit my brother, his wife, and my nephew in September-ish, I believe. September, October. Um, I took the bus down. Uh, so I was in Toronto and had a layover for a while. So I knew I'd have to practice getting home. So I had some time on my hands. So I spent some time on the TTC, on the subway, practicing getting to from locations so that way I felt a bit more comfortable when I had to you know come home um, and ultimately you may need to seek the help either of a neurologist a neuropsychologist a speech pathologist an occupational therapist or anyone else your clinical team thinks that can creatively and constructively assist you with your memory issues and I know that it is highly frustrating I know that it is very difficult to have to accept the fact that there are times where you may or may not remember things. I know it is demoralizing at times when, you know, someone walks up to you and you go, hey, you know me, and you're like, I don't have a fucking clue who you are. You're thinking that in your head, of course. You're not going to say that out loud. Uh, and you're thinking, I, I don't have a fucking clue who you are. Option A, smile, nod, and pretend to get along and hope they go away quickly. Option B, be realistic. Just like, I'll be honest, I, I don't know who you are. I don't remember you. That might be more uncomfortable for them. And I appreciate that may be more uncomfortable for them. But again, your comfort is not my concern. Right? But I'm just going to be honest about that. Your comfort has nothing to do with my level of concern when it comes to things like my memory. I'm just going to call my foul and go, I don't know who you are. Right. Let's, let's let's figure who you are. Um, some might say that's selfish. I really don't know, but I'm just being realistic. I, I, I don't want to have to be in a situation where a month down the road, like, oh, you told me you know who I am. And I'm like, mm, yeah, well, I had to lie. Right. So on that note, if you happen to have been enjoying what you've been watching over the past, um, coming up on almost, I believe, 10 months, Please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone's going through their own post-stroke journey or assisting someone going through their post-stroke journey, please point the channel at them. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the little notification bell so you get the little dingy, dingy, dingy when videos get uploaded. And then if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, uh, that being someone who appears to be befuddled, confused, has lack of balance, someone has vision problems they see in grayscale, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, uh, they certainly can only see like a small little window in the world, uh, someone who has facial droop, uh, someone who has, 
they can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. They have slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. They can't smile equally effectively or at all. They have general body weakness, weakness on one side, um, or they can't maintain their own body weight. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.